Hey, Ben Steeler joins John and I this week on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast, and we're discussing the changes here in Ontario with WSIB as they relate to owner-operators. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Ben Stiller of NTL Insurance. Hey, welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Hey, guys. How are you doing, Ben? Amazing. Great to be on here with the uh, crazy John and Chris. There well, you I'm go. glad you said it was crazy John and normal Chris. That's how yes, I'm yeah, saying. of course, yes. <laughs> it is obvious that John is a little more crazy, yes. Yeah. Hey, Ben, can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into today's topic of the new WSIB junk? Um, tell us a little bit about Ben Stiller and NTL. For sure. Yeah, so I work at National Truck League, a Westland company, and uh, I specialize in the owner-operator programs for fleets here in Ontario. And uh, what I specialize in is WSIB alternative when the owner-operators opt out of WSIB coverage. And we have a preferred product that is better coverage, cheaper premiums. And uh, the importance of these types of products is protecting your commercial policy, which we also offer commercial insurance here. But um, our policy would pay first before your accident benefits coverage ever gets touched, reducing your claim values and, um, you know, preferring getting you preferred renewals with your commercial provider, uh, making sure your claims are lower. See, you said a mouthful right there. And I do yeah. want to ask you in a few minutes about first payer, because that's an important mm -hmm. thing. But mm -hmm. Before we get into that, um, WSIB, they've got this form. Uh, that's disappeared now called an 1149A form, which is no longer. What the heck has replaced it? Why did they replace it? And how does it affect owner operators? That's a loaded question. There, Psh, over to Ben. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I can handle that. Well, the one thing I am sad about this change is the lingo 1149A just rolled off the tongue so well. And now mm -hmm. we got mm -hmm. 10687A. So you can get. You know, we'll figure something out. It'll, it'll come up as it, <laughs> as it goes through the uh, industry. But yeah, the, the main change with this form, so the 1149A is gone, and this new form is now for the transportation industry in general, not just trucking. They have a ride-sharing category, which I know nothing about and I don't plan on talking about. But um, the main change on this is the VIN for the owner-operators of their vehicles that they own. And usually, if they were going carrier to carrier, uh, you know, you leave one and go to the next, you resubmit all over again. But now you will get one with your truck VIN on it that follows you. If you move carrier to carrier, you don't have to resubmit. So there's definitely administration uh, time savings. Okay, so there's the first big change. Yes. Your mm -hmm. VIN number for the owner operator gets registered and you don't have to resubmit if you change um, where right. you're working. Right. Um, and yeah, I always got to say, this is so funny. We always say VIN number, but VIN stands for vehicle identification number. So we're saying number. <laughs> we, we always do it. Um, but yeah, that's the main part. And I don't know, do you guys have much idea if WSIB cares or coordinates about this driver ink problem? Because this is, goes in line with the problem. That, I don't mm -hmm. You think so, John? It, it is a big problem. And, uh, you know, cause unfortunately that misclassification of drivers, um, is putting a bit of bearing. Uh, I see clients all the time and, uh, I'm seeing some that are going, oh, we'll just get this alternative program and we won't pay WSIB for yes. those guys. And it's like, whoa, whoa, hang on. They're not true owner operators, so they can't opt out. And I know right. there's a lot of misunderstanding with a, a number of these operators. And those carriers wouldn't be using the forms at all right now, then. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Well, people need to learn, right? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And so my experience is just to finish that off. A lot of uh, driver ink companies do pay WSIB for their drivers. Yes. yes. So. Uh, and, sure. and, 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 and then they top it off with, you know, out of province, uh, medical yes. coverage, disability benefits and stuff like that over and right. above the WSIB. So there's a lot of good operators out there that are doing good for both. Yes. Yes. So let's get back to this 10687A forms. Yeah. 10687A. That's that 10687A. Uh, so Ben, the first change was the, uh, 
vehicle identification number moves with the owner operator. What's yeah. another change? Honestly, that is the largest change. There are some other small changes on the form. Like one thing is you won't be able to, you don't have to send in your articles of incorporation anymore, uh, but really just like your ownership. Um, and one thing I, I haven't seen yet come up, but I don't, they might be able to track it in the background or use some other documents to link you towards this. But if you send your ownership in and you have a lease, I think your ownership would show, yeah. and you're under a carrier, your ownership would show the lease company and then the right. carrier you work from both. So I don't know right. how, right. I don't know what they'll do, but from what I've heard, they will be able to verify it in the background without, but they probably will just reach out to you for your articles of incorporation if you need it. Well, and I would think that they'd want a copy of the lease agreement as well to be able to right. show your company in relation to the lease. Yes, uh, the lease, the, the leasing company so that they can right. go, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. And then your lease agreement would show that VIN number as well. Right. That makes sense. Yes. The lease agreement is also requested yeah. on this. Yeah. Now I heard a rumor, so I need you to say yay, nay, expand on it. That if an owner or operator staying with the same carrier decides to purchase a new truck, they've mm -hmm. got to do something now. Yes, correct. They do. They do the whole process over again, just to get the VIN. Oh my God. But but how, do, how often is an owner-operator purchasing a new vehicle right now when trucks are as expensive as mm -hmm. they are? I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't see any trends personally, but like I just don't think if a guy has a five-year-old vehicle, he's looking around right now to spend another right. 200 grand. <laughs> That's how much they are right now. Exactly. Yeah, trucks. It's like going to the grocery store. I think I spend 200 grand every time I go to the grocery store. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And I'm kind of making light of the fact that my God, equipment has gotten so yes. expensive. Yes. Yeah. Hence, yeah. you I, need I, really good insurance coverage to pay for the darn thing. Yeah. No doubt. Right. No doubt. Yeah. I, I was and out honestly, to a, a client a couple of weeks ago. They have all new Peterbilts. How? And wow. owner operators are paying 360000 for a new Peterbilt. Yeah. Oh. And I'm like, I'm like, how, 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 but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just Better we make it 10 bucks a mile. I think, I think we could, I could confidently say we are seeing more trends and just conversations I'm having that owner operators are kind of going back to company drivers, especially sure. if it's at the end of their career, it's just yep. uh, getting pinched so thin and you see the load boards right now. And like the prices for some loads yep. that used to be three grand or $700 right now. So mm -hmm. A lot of pinching on this. We love owner operators, but they're getting pinched right now. And hopefully that yeah. trends in the opposite direction soon. And I think trucking companies are hurting right now as well. Yeah. I mean, um, the government hasn't said we're in a recession, but I certainly believe we are in a recession. Many trucking sure. clients tell me freight rates, um, I'll use their words, suck at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. I can see it, um, owner operators leaving the business now because I yeah. think we're going to be in a recession for, I don't know, eight to 12 months more yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, I agree with you, Chris. Well, and, I, and I'm also hearing that used truck prices are starting to decline, uh, because the market is just so saturated with them again, which goes in line with owner operators walking away from the business. Right. Right. right? More inventory so, coming and, in the market. Yeah. And trucking companies smaller companies closing yep. up shop closing up yeah right. because again freight rates are hurting yeah. so i think yep. everybody's hurting not just the owner operator uh, but certainly where if you've got some size involved maybe you can downsize a little easier in the small 10 truck fleet how many? right that's yeah. not what we're um, here to talk about we're yeah talking. sorry i really want to talk <laughs> about this new wsib you call yeah. it a 10687a yeah, it sounds good. That's flowing off. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't written down, I wouldn't know what the heck. Yeah, it's all written down. Um, but getting back to the VIN, here's what I think. I mean, I'm just speculating. I'm This is so new, and like no one has really talked about it. OTA put out a quick announcement. WSAB is slowly coming out talking about it. But even with our cab reporting we're seeing from our insurance companies, they are now doing this thing called a chameleon report where they are tracking your if their VIN has been insured on multiple policies. So I'm wondering if they use this VIN information 
because uh, maybe someone is submitting other opt-out forms in another mm-hmm. way and they're using the same VIN and then they go, ding, ding, ding. Nope, sorry, that's fraud or uh, I don't know, mm-hmm. fraud. But that VIN's already yeah. opted out. It's associated to another own operator. So therefore, you must right. be an incorporated driver. Sure. I don't know. That's speculation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is new, the whole thing. Now, just from a carrier point of view, what's do they access this new form online like they used to? Yeah, I would. The best thing you do is you Google independent owner operator WSAB. They have a full page laid out with the PDF downloaded. And then there's also some mm, good. FQ, frequently asked questions. And it's a lot of stuff, really good information. Um, but really, the, the biggest change about this whole thing is really the VIN number. I could get into like smaller details. They did put some pretty strong wording at the end of the opt-out form saying it wasn't there before on 1149A, but it says like by signing this form, you are agreeing from going on, like going forward, there is no coverage from WSIB. So Mm -hmm. kind of protect themselves that way. I don't know if WSIB had some owner operator in the past say, Hey, I submitted the form and, but I, I didn't hear back yet. So therefore I thought I was covered. And then they get into a claim tussle. Um, yeah. And then the last piece of wording that was changed, honestly, was just they made it clear that owner operators are able to purchase fuel and other services however they want. And that wasn't in there before. So I don't know um, what their intent was with that. But me going through each document comparing, that was really the two other key wording changes. Okay. I saw. That's cool, though. Well, it kind of says, hey, you are independent. If you can buy mm-hmm. your fuel mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, yeah, because this whole driver ain't owner operator cra uh, it i'd swear right now but uh, it's not a flip <laughs> it out right <laughs> oh my god so all right is that about all we wanted to talk about for this new 10687a form yes yeah, for sure. And I've talked to a lot of carriers. They've started using it. They were on top of it. Uh, I think, I think I don't know who cares. In the WSAB should care, but it should be more broadcasted to everyone. Maybe they're yeah. still receiving 1149As. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it just changed only maybe a month and a half ago again. And like there was yeah. not much press about well, it. Well, and, and, yeah, and from what I understood uh, from some information that uh, I was listening to and reading, you don't have to do anything at this time. If you've been, if you've issued an 1149A when it was okay to do so, you don't have to make any changes right now until you either change jobs or you change that vehicle. Smart. Instead of making all these carriers just do a thousand opt-out right. forms again. That right. would have been kind yeah. of, that would have pissed everyone off. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, would have just created a paperwork nightmare that doesn't need to happen. Yeah. yeah, and you know what trucking companies need is more paperwork. They don't have enough now. You guys going in there <laughs> preaching that, eh? All right. Let's, if that's it for this, I got to look at it again, 106, 87, A form. Um, we'll have it memorized by the time we're done this podcast. Yeah. Oh, no, that might be the last time I say 106, 87, A form. What let's talk about why owner operators might consider purchasing uh, a third party insurance coverage such as NTL. Great question. So that's how we started, and there's there's other um, insurance brokers that are in the same industry and business as us for this. And so, what it WSIB is not considered a first payer to your commercial policy, and the policy wording we has specifically says we pay this first. For your commercial policy, before your commercial policy, and there's coverage on the commercial policy called accident benefits. That's on mm-hmm. every single auto policy in Ontario. Obviously, you guys know this, mm-hmm. and those benefits would be weekly income, or you know, getting healthy again through professional services. Okay, sorry. and the problem. Okay, I gotta no. ask. Explain this thing first payer, in case okay. somebody doesn't know what that is. First payer is in a claim situation. Everyone has all these certain, you know, there's multiple policies flying around in a claim and people are kind of looking to see who's going to go first. And that is technically what we are saying on our policy is that we will pay first always towards your commercial policy before you open up a claim on your commercial policy. Okay. So and anyone that's listening to this knows trans- that they don't want one of those claims on their policy. <laughs> I was just going to translate. So... NTL's policy will pay before your auto policy would pay. Yes. 
Yes. That's what we're saying. Okay. Whereas other policies wouldn't have that in there. And then the, if you tried to claim with those people, they would say, hey, go to your commercial policy first and mm-hmm. then we'll top you up. Right. Which, well, and, and the unfortunate aspect there is there's a lot more policies out there that do not pay first right. than there are that do. And the unfortunate aspect is the auto policy really, when it comes to statutory action benefits, does not really have any limitations. So right. that alternative oh. that says, hey, we'll top up after the fact, really will probably never top up at all. They'll never pay. So you're paying right. for a product that you'll never use. And anyone that has a commercial trucking policy that cares and asks their broker for their loss run ratio where they can see their uh, claims and everything. I have a great example of a trucking company. It was a four-year time frame and, you know, minimal, minimal. Then one year they have a million dollar claim, accident benefits. They reserve mm-hmm. so much if they think this person will be injured for so long. Yep. It was a million dollars yep. reserved claim. Yep. So then if you're at your commercial renewal with your broker and they're you're you're yep. getting a huge rate increase or possibly non renewed, well, mm-hmm. look, they they have a claim open that's more than your premiums. Mm-hmm. And so that is detrimental to a trucking company. You never want to yep. have a non renewal yep. with a trucking company. You always yep. want to have options. And yep. so when I see uh, trucking companies, I look at their loss reports. I, if I see accident benefits claims, I have to say, what is going on here? Why are you mm-hmm. guys opening? I mean, I, you need to, there is a solution for this. Yes. And that's this product. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, in, in talking with underwriters over our years, and Chris and I will both be able to attest to this, in the auto policy, that statutory accident benefit portion is a very, very small portion of your overall premiums. Right. Because the underwriter is under the expectation that you have a solution in place for that. Right. Yeah. So when you get hit with that, now all of a sudden you've got a million dollar reserve. First thing they're looking at doing is rubbing their hands together and going, time to fatten that number because you guys just failed to do what you should have done when the solution was right there. Yeah. Well, and, and John, I don't know if you have had the same experience as me. Having worked for an insurance company in the past, they ask the question, do you have third-party coverage for accident yeah. benefit? They don't right. ask the follow-up question often saying, is it a first payee? Correct. It, Correct. Because, and unfortunately, the trucking clients don't understand the difference. Yep. They're shopping right. based on price. Yes. Right. And they're not comparing apples to apples. Right. Ben? <laughs> well, I, I'm just saying. It's not fair. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So one of the it, questions an insurance co- or sorry, a trucking company should be asking if they have owner operators and they're purchasing a third party coverage insurance is, are you first payer? Right. We have, and we talk to safety services people all the time from insurance companies, probably what you guys were doing in the past. Mm-hmm. And um, they always are recommending me. And so. Large, well-established carriers are obviously very on top of it, but we see 30 trucks sized companies that every year when they have their safety review, they call and they say, hey, my safety person says I need this. And and then you say, okay, well, this is kind of like paid by your owner operators. It's in a benefit in a way you can deduct it from their pay stub. And then they go, yeah. well, I don't want to lose any drivers. I mean, I don't want to put a new plan in. I'm scared about that. And then they just yeah. never want to follow through on it. But it's it's just the classic insurance sale where you don't need it until you need it. And so one time they have an accident benefit claim and then they're going to go, Northbridge is non-renewing me or something. It's like, we yeah. had this conversation. Yeah. I'm sorry you couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah. So, yeah. but that's just, that's just insurance in general. Yeah. 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 And, and not to um, throw Northbridge under the bus, they would all be in the, yeah. Yeah. the insurance. Yeah. Sorry. Exactly. Of course, all of them came would be agreed. Love Northbridge, yeah, amazing yeah, insurance yeah. company. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, my former life was with Old Republic. Um, they would do the same thing. I'm right. sure Intact would do, you know, they're all, all of the big insurance companies, the reputable mm-hmm. ones, all operate mm-hmm. the same way. Yes. And you really need to cover your owner operators. And the other thing you mentioned there that you kind of slid over was source deducted. Um, right. So, and you suggested that the company pay the premiums for the third party insured and then deduct it from the owner operator. Why yeah. is that important? That's because you know their coverage is in force. So if yes. you have a fleet with a bunch of owner operators and you say, 
please get coverage. And then you can ask them to send certificates monthly, or sometimes we'll have people say, let us know if they cancel. But you need to have every single hour that that driver is, and we do 24 seven coverage. That's another key I completely blew by. <laughs> WSIB would only be while you're driving and we do 24 seven. You are, you get an invoice every month with all of the drivers' names on it, so you know that they are they're getting their premiums charged. They are covered. Versus if you have someone, you say, "Hey, please just get your coverage. Let us know you have it." They could uh, have a non-pay. They could just cancel it and say, "Oh, well, then my carrier is not asking for a certificate." Claim time, boom, devastation. And okay, so let's just highlight twenty-four hours Sorry, coverage I'm, against the mm -hmm. USIB because. Everywhere. Yeah, I mean, if I slip in the shower and mm -hmm. throw my shoulder out, and now I'm not able to work for a few weeks, am I covered? Yeah, that is an amazing question. Considering we just had a claim where a guy slipped in his shower and he's now yeah. getting paid and he's off work. Sure, we. Sure. I think we. I can't. I can't put confident stats to it, but I think we would pay more claims not working, even though guys are injured a lot while they're mm -hmm. you know unloading and loading into the truck. But um, yeah, so WSIB is on the job. And tough to really kind of define that when you're a truck driver. Like mm -hmm. if you're parked and you're walking in to get some food from Flying J, are you tech and you slip on some ice? Are you technically on the mm -hmm. job or are you not? And so with our yeah. coverage, it's literally just cross the board all the time. So we had a guy fall in his garage once and hurt his hand, and just all these you know just common disability stories. But mm -hmm. it's still if they had that and no WSIB they are technically just out of luck. Yep, yep. And okay. I think truckers love to like work at home when they're home too. So they're pretty busy. They're always sure. stuck in a truck. Sure. So they love to do their yeah. yard work. They like to do their, you know, yep. work in their garage. Well, are they well, on duty when they're changing the oil on the owner operator of the truck? Blah, blah, and, blah, and, blah, and they blah, get hurt. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, you, you know what I mean? Like, what? Well, and I'm just yep. taking your situation of the truck stop. What if, Certainly, having a shower is an off-duty activity. I suspect. Yeah, yeah. But if they're in a shower at a truck stop and they slip and yep. fall, they covered. Well, with NTLs, they are covered, but yes. not yeah. likely. Well, I, I I don't want to go there, but would they be covered with W with WSIB? No, that'd cool. be, and that's that's the problem is to having the lack of judge. You have to yeah. question it and make judgment on yeah. it. So, yeah, that. I'd never thought of that before because I'm just thinking, you know, if you're off duty, in my mind, if you're off duty, WSIB is not covering it. Uh, that right. may or may not be true because I got no experience, but I'm just thinking that would be the easy definition. But certainly NTL says it doesn't matter. You're covered. Right. Cause maybe they even look at your logbook and say, well, you were off duty mm -hmm. at 1030 mm -hmm. and then you, we found out you slipped at 11. That's what insurance yeah. companies will do. They're not like. Yeah. I mean, I love insurance, but they're not in the business of just trying to give it away as yeah. quick as possible. They right. do want to make right. a case. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking that, you know, on the other hand, I wouldn't be in North Dakota um, as an mm -hmm. owner-operator unless I was working. So I can see right. arguing right. it both ways. Right. But mm -hmm. uh, and not, none of us here are lawyers with all that WSIB experience mm -hmm. to say Definitely this not. is how it's worked. And I'll bet you it's worked <laughs> both ways in the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no in sure. courts and but anyways, the mm -hmm. easy way would be to have third party coverage. That's a first payer, and yep. we wouldn't be talking yep. about this junk. Right. It creates <laughs> peace of mind. Uh, yeah. There you go. So, that's I think what insurance is in Latin. I think that's what yeah. that means. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. See? Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> well, and as you said, unfortunately, um, you don't appreciate insurance until you need it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. So, so like Ben, having... let me ask you this question. How long has NTL been around? Uh, I think it was 91. My dad started 91. this business. 91. Yeah. That's interesting because I remember when I was an owner-operator and I had my trucks, we had NTL. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I love hearing so, that. I get some other people yeah. that ha are not driving anymore, and they yeah. started off like other businesses in the trucking industry. Yeah. And like, yeah, we used to have you back in the day, and you paid a claim yeah. quickly, and yeah. like, it just. Yeah. And then obviously, you hear the other side of the story too, where some people mm -hmm. had some problems. But um, yeah, it's been ninety one, and this has been really the bread and butter and travel insurance on top. You know, you get the whole package to cover these owner operators, but then 
you know, you just, as you go through the industry and network, well, do you guys do commercial insurance? Well, not yet. And then we set that up and then we start have a very successful commercial trucking portfolio. And then uh, we did personal insurance just because, you know, again, truck companies say, do you have any kind of car and home insurance we could offer right. to our so it just organically grew to what the trucking industry needed and wanted. And uh, we are here today and very happy just to really hone in on the trucking industry. You know, we, we really preach sure. appreciation for this industry and the hard work that goes yeah. behind all the miles these guys are putting in. And we, we work right by the highway. And so sometimes it's just like, look out that window and tell me yeah. you could do that job. And we sit in here, yeah. we sit in our company offices like, getting as much water as we want, going to the bathroom, just the smallest things that these guys don't get access to. And they're yeah. delivering essentials that we need to live. So try to mm -hmm. preach that a lot around here. And just, uh, we really only sure. focus on the trucking industry and no other industries like this. And I'm very grateful for what my father did and, you know, started this and cool. I can kind of follow in the footsteps. So, yeah. Well, I think that's cool. an awesome, awesome place to kind of wrap this up. Yeah. But, as we wrap it up, I got to say, Ben Stiller of NTL is an owner operator specialist. So if you've got questions about 10687A for Great job, the USID, you can reach out to Ben. If you've got questions about third party coverage and what the heck a first payer is and all that kind of stuff, reach out to Ben. Ben's uh, contact info is in the show notes down below. So do that. Ben Stiller of NTL, thank you so much for coming on yes. the Fucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. And many thanks to Ben Stiller of NTL for coming on to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast and explaining the changes to WSIB here in Ontario. Thanks, Ben. Have a great week. That's it for John and I this week. <laughs>